All right, is this thing on? What's happening? What are we doing? Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Bradley Joyce, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the business of landscape photography and my first three months as a full time landscape photographer. Let's get into it. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. I am here in my home office, home studio, whatever I guess this is behind me. Um, back here in Texas, finally, after spending the last uh, four months or so, five months, man, uh, up in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon with family. Uh, so it's good to be back and just kind of settling in, trying to find a groove again here in Texas. Uh, and oh man, a little bit overwhelmed with thinking about trying to go out and find landscape photography locations here in Texas. That's a whole nother story that I'm not going to get into in this video. Yeah, so in this video, I just kind of want to take a step back and look uh, look through the first three months of my landscape photography journey uh, as a full-time landscape photographer. Um, review some of the images, some of my favorites, and then talk a little bit about the business side of things. So... Yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, this first one here up on the screen is the fairy tree. And actually, so this actually ended up being the first video that I published on YouTube, but sort of the second image I took kind of once going full time. Um, but yeah, it's this beautiful old maple tree that's on my mom's property. Uh, she has a timber farm there in Oregon. Um, and it's just kind of in one of these little pockets where there's still some of the old growth uh, forest left and uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've actually tried to f take a photograph of this tree like four or five times and just never <laughs> can really figure out how to get all these spindly branches and all the ferns and all this green like into a compelling composition. Um, but I think this finally worked. Um, just kind of really trying a different angle than what I had taken previously. Um, I've actually even submitted this image to a photography contest and hopefully we'll be hearing back about the results uh, in just a couple of weeks. So I don't think this is quite a you know, technically perfect image, but it certainly, for me anyway, evokes quite a bit of emotion and it's just kind of one of these subjects that really draws you in and it's like, what what am I looking at and it just kind of commands attention. Um, so really, really love this image. Uh, the second one is Jackson Bottom Wetlands. And uh, if you remember the video, I'd actually gone out to this location the day previously for sunrise, had a ton of color in the sky and got thwarted by flooded trails. Um, so I actually ended up kind of coming over to this other area of that same location the next day. Uh, and managed to get this photo and it definitely a much moodier vibe than what I would have gotten the previous day, but I ended up really liking it. Um, so yeah, just a nice kind of really moody image with this tree as the subject. Uh, and yeah, love this image as well. So this one is Upper North Falls in at Silver, Silver Falls State Park uh, in Oregon. And it's a very beautiful kind of short little hike in along this river. Uh, to where the falls is at um, and there's tons of photos of this location out there everywhere <laughs> that you can see that's a uh, silver falls state park is one of oregon's most popular state parks so tons of photos of it but in these kind of scenarios i find that it's it's kind of a nice um uh, a nice way of sort of judging where you're at uh with your photography because you have so much to compare it against um and so, you know, I always enjoy just kind of getting my own version of popular locations just as practice. Um, so this location was great. And that little bit of light up there in the corner kind of poking through uh, just really um, kind of, you know, set the whole thing off for me. And um, yeah, enjoyed this one as well. Uh, and finally, this is uh, at White River Falls State Park. Um, I had been, you know, planning out this whole shoot around White River Falls, which is a pretty cool uh, waterfall and you know woke up really early 3 a.m something crazy like that <laughs> got all the way out there 
start walking down and like I realize, oh my goodness, if I take a picture of the falls, I'm facing away from sunrise, away from all this color that's happening right now in the sky. Couldn't believe I made such a mistake. Um, and this shot, I ended up was, you know, just kind of scrambling around, trying to save something, trying to capture a little bit of this color in the sky. Um, and this I just took really quickly from uh, right there at the sort of overlook, right at the falls, uh, just looking away from the falls down the canyon, over the river, and really like it. You know, the kind of got that S curve right in the middle of the composition, nice canyon. And of course, the color was awesome. Uh, and just a kind of a cool place of Oregon history. So if I zoom in here, uh, down here at the bottom of the photo, you can kind of see that remnant building there. And this actually was one of the earliest um, hydroelectric power plants in Oregon. So I think it operated from like 1910 to 1960 or something like that. So yeah, pretty cool and ended up really loving this photo. So those are four of my favorite photos for my first quarter as a full-time landscape photographer. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Feel free to go back, check out the videos from you know each of those shoots if you uh, like these images. All right, so switching gears now to talk a little bit about the business side of things over these first three months. Um, for me, all of it really starts with my website. So I knew that from day one, I needed to have a website out there where people could find me, could find my work, and really use it as the foundation uh, upon which to build my business. Um, and so I used Squarespace, like a lot of folks do, to create the website. Um, and it is a portfolio, but also somewhere where people can purchase prints, they can find all my videos, uh, the stories that I write about each uh, shoot that I go out on, uh, all of my different links for social media, uh, and how they can support me uh, on this creative journey. And so really, it's kind of that hub for everything about my photography and, and my work. Um, and I knew that it was going to be important for me, especially as I try to use these other platforms like you know Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all these other things like all that kind of stuff can go away in an instant, but I will always have you know my website. So it's really important to me to try to build a quality website uh, and one that really showcases my work well. So I think I've achieved that, and obviously it'll be a work in progress. Um, but as you can see here, the the main landing page is you know just uh, kind of a nice looking portfolio where people can you know see my images, you know click on one, kind of get get some of the details. Um, and then I have information about prints, I have all my videos, like I said, all those kinds of things. So, um, now obviously if you have a website, you need traffic. So I think, you know, I was pleasantly surprised with how much, uh, traffic I've been getting to my website. Uh, as you can see here over the first three months, uh, just under a thousand unique visitors, which I think is pretty cool. Now some of this, especially in February, um, I experimented with some ads on Facebook and Instagram to try to drive additional traffic and kind of see what that, how that worked um, and just kind of experiment with a little bit. So February especially, a lot of that traffic was from ads, so not necessarily organic. Um, but you can see here the nice little improvement from uh, you know January with 46 visits and then March with 222. Uh, and both those months are relatively organic, not, no, no ads really in either of those months. Um, so I'm happy with with that growth. Um, you know, I think if I can continue to uh, to be creative, create, post, uh, you know, share those links across all the networks and and that sort of thing, um, you know, the traffic to my website will continue to grow. Uh, and of course, that's extremely important. You know, some of my top content. Um, you know, this this post leaving a six figure job for landscape photography. This was actually kind of the story of. You know what I was doing and I used that in conjunction with some of the advertising that I was experimenting with um, so 549 visits on that which uh, you know was pretty cool um, that also translated into a few subscriptions on my newsletter a few new followers on Instagram a few new likes on Facebook um, so you know that was a valuable experiment for that um, portfolio is essentially my home page so that's where most people land when they go to BradleyJoyce.com obviously um, so, you know, pretty happy with this. Um, now, one thing that was really pleasantly 
uh, surprising was just how many people are clicking on the prints link on my website and looking for information about prints. Um, I'm really, really, really hoping that I can build a real legitimate business around prints. Um, seeing a photo of mine printed and hanging on the wall, you know, like this one, this one above me of Multnomah Falls. I just love, love that. It's like my ultimate goal. I want somebody to be inspired by one of my images. I want them to be able to purchase it and hang it on their wall. Uh, and that's, you know, that's my ultimate goal is, is I want my photography hanging on walls in people's houses, you know, in offices, you know, uh, if I dare say someday in an art show, gallery, museum, whatever it might be, um, just being able to have the physical print, touch it, see it in that, it's just a totally different experience from, you know, looking at it on a small screen on Instagram or on a laptop or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, that's, I'm really excited about that. I haven't figured out exactly, you know, how I'm going to be doing all my printing. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to figure out soon. I did get a few inquiries into prints, uh, which was really encouraging. Um, but I just haven't figured out how I'm going to be handling all that yet. So I haven't sold any prints up till now. So one of the other important aspects of the website is my email newsletter. Um, so anybody that comes to the website uh, will eventually be prompted to subscribe if they're interested. Um, and it's something that I think is really important for anybody uh, as kind of just a fundamental marketing tool is to build your own email newsletter and email subscription list. Um, like I said, if, you know, if Facebook or Instagram or YouTube goes away, um, being able to engage with, you know, folks that have given you their email address and said, Hey, you know, send me an email when you have something interesting to share. Uh, you know, that's really powerful. Um, and I see that as another kind of fundamental aspect of my website in the business is just growing that email list. Um, so I'm excited that I have 60 subscribers on that after my first, uh, three months full time. Uh, and hopefully I can just continue to grow that list as well. Now, the other thing that I'm doing as part of the business aspect of uh, my landscape photography journey is I created a buymeacoffee.com page. And so this is very similar to Patreon. Uh, I think more people are familiar with Patreon perhaps. Um, and it's a site where basically you can support creators, um, artists, and people that are creating you know content. Um, in whatever way kind of makes sense for you. So uh, obviously buy me a coffee. That's kind of like the, the, you know, their fun little play on it. Um, so yeah, you can do one-time donations. Uh, there's a subscription aspect to it as well um, where people can get additional perks for subscribing. So like in my case, for any of my subscribers, uh, they get access to my videos and photos first before anybody else. Um, I also share exclusive content. Uh, just with my subscribers and supporters uh, on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Um, so for the folks that are like really into you know what I'm doing, that's kind of the place where, that they can support. Um, so I've been experimenting with that. I haven't promoted it heavily yet. I don't think I'm quite to the point where you know it makes sense for me to really push it. Uh, but I have shared it a couple times across social media, and, uh, and I'm pleasantly surprised that it has generated me a tiny bit of revenue. So, um, you know, through 359 views of my page, I've earned 55 bucks, uh, which is awesome. Um, and the thing that really interests me about that, though, is if you kind of do the math from an advertising perspective or like how you might compare that to like YouTube earnings or something, um, 55 bucks for 359 views equates to roughly like $155 uh, CPM. So, uh, you know, on YouTube, if you are a part of their AdSense, you know, YouTube partner program, uh, and you're in a really profitable niche and you're doing really, really well, you might get like $30 uh, CPM. Um, so being at $155 through this kind of buy me a coffee uh, page uh, is really uh, quite interesting. And if I can continue to, um, you know, grow my audience and provide quality content, then, you know, that's going to be a very interesting revenue stream for me. Um, the kind of final bit to my business is YouTube. Uh, and you know, that's obviously something I've just started in January. 
I'm only at 68 subscribers. If I'm being super honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with how YouTube has gone for me so far. Um, you know, obviously, I was hoping I'd have more subscribers at this point. I was, I'm hoping, uh, you know, that I'd have more views on my videos. Um, but, you know, also, it's just kind of the game of YouTube and being early, I think. Um, it, you know, it's tough. It's a grind. You hear it all the time. Uh, people commenting on just how difficult YouTube can be, especially getting started. But uh, I love the process of making videos. I love filming my photography adventures. I love putting together, uh, you know, um, videos that kind of share the story of what it takes to get the shot. And so hopefully as I continue to do that, I'll find my audience on YouTube. I'll be able to grow my subscriber base. Um, you know, I'll be able to kind of find the right format for my videos and, you know, titles and thumbnails and all the things that you kind of have to do for YouTube. Uh, and then, you know, my main goal is that um, through showcasing the adventure to get the shot that, you know, kind of captures people's attention. So if folks are intrigued by one of my images, you know, perhaps the video pushes them over the top in terms of, you know, wanting to purchase that image and purchase a print. Um, so I'm kind of using it as, uh, you know, being able to grow my audience, exposing more people to uh, my work and my photography, um, but then also as sort of like this extra background on on the image itself if somebody's interested in, in purchasing a print. So we'll see how that journey continues to go. But like I said, I really love the process. I'm learning a lot uh, and I really do enjoy making the videos. So. Uh, if you've enjoyed any of my videos up to this point, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, hit the like button on this video. It really helps me out. Uh, and yeah, so this has just been kind of a quick overview of my first three months as a full-time landscape photographer uh, and kind of the business aspect of that as well. <laughs> Not much business uh, up to this point, but it's been an amazing journey so far. I'm really looking forward to the next three months. Uh, and I got some really exciting photography trips coming up, so I can't wait to share those with y'all as well. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Go check out my website at bradleyjoyce.com. I really do appreciate your support. We'll catch y'all in the next video. Take it easy.